Hey, welcome to the shop. Do you hear that buzzing sound? That's pulsed MIG welding, or more technically known as pulsed spray transfer. If you don't know why it's called that, you will by the end of this video. Let's dive in and understand what pulsed is for, when you might use it, and if you really need this process in your shop. This isn't what you're probably used to hearing when you're MIG welding. You're probably more used to something like this. This is the short circuit transfer mode. And the reason it's called that is because the wire actually extends out of your gun, contacts the workpiece, and then melts back over and over again, creating that short circuit effect and giving you kind of that frying bacon sound. This helps to control the heat input into your material. However, it can lead to certain lack of fusion defects in a lot of cases. So if you want to have the arc lit all the time, you just need to increase your voltage, change some settings a little bit, and change over to a shielding gas that is a lower percentage of CO2 or even a little bit of oxygen. That'll give you what's called a spray transfer like this, where the arc is on all the time. And this avoids those lack of fusion defects, but it puts so much heat into your material that it's really most useful on thicker sections and in the flat and horizontal welding position. This is where pulse spray transfer comes in. Like regular spray transfer, you have the arc lit all the time. However, you're increasing and decreasing the welding current over and over again electronically rather than using that short circuiting mechanism. It's kind of like going from a carburetor to fuel injection. Using pulled spray transfer, you can weld on thinner materials and in all welding positions. Okay, now that the machine is set up for spray transfer on steel, I'm gonna go ahead and tack up a T-joint and weld it all the way along here. As I weld it, just notice that I'm using a little bit longer stick out than I'd use for short circuit MIG welding. And also, I'm using a slight push angle all the way along. You can see the puddle flows along well, and it's relatively easy to run this process. The key here is staying up on the leading edge of that puddle. You end up with a weld that's uh, every bit as smooth as you are steady, and you can avoid a lot of those lack of fusion defects. Okay, well you can see that worked pretty well on steel. Let's switch over to run aluminum, and that's where pulse MIG welding can really shine, is getting a nice smooth aluminum weld. Rather than using a spool gun, I'm going to use a standard gun with a graphite liner that reduces friction and allows me to push that aluminum wire through. It's also a larger gun that's a little more heavy duty. See that contact tip, how much larger it is than a standard one below it? The question of which filler to use is always an interesting one. You've got 53, 56 is better for thinner material or if you're going to anodize and 4043 it runs a little bit cleaner and hotter. We're gonna use 4043 today and load that right into the machine. I'm gonna use a special drive roll to help feed everything through and switch over to straight argon, which I'm pulling off my TIG welder and setting clear up right around 40 CFH. I'm using a stitching technique here on the first half of the weld that helps me to maintain pace and gives me a bit of a rippled appearance. Halfway through, I'll switch and just run the second half as a stringer bead, and either one of these techniques will work just fine. We can take a look at how the weld turned out, and you can see the difference between that stitch technique and the stringer bead, and overall it looks good as long as I put my thumb over that crater at the end uh, and hide that. That crater can be solved with a change to a setting, but that's going to be a task for another day. So while I clean up here, let's just talk about whether you actually need this. For the regular person, probably you don't. However, for certain jobs, it can be a really nice tool to have at hand. For example, when you're welding thin sections of aluminum with MIG, running without pulse can be really difficult. You build up too much heat and it's harder to control. Really useful for that. Also for certain steel work, if you're trying to maintain a high level of quality, avoid lack of fusion defects, but you need the control to be able to weld in all positions, it can be really great for that. Hey, well, thanks for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below. And if you are just getting started with welding, I have some beginner online courses where I walk you through in a hands-on way 
all of the basics to where you're able to run some really nice beads on all of the common joints. So click on the link here on the screen or down in the description so you can check those out if it might be helpful for you. Till next time, weld safe and we'll see you then.